One, you are going to listen to a conversation between two people, a customer and a representative of a company which rents cars. There are three alternative answers: A, B, and C for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the appropriate letter. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Now listen to the first part of the conversation, and answer questions one to six. For calling Carline, so that we can best help you, can you please press the star button on your phone now? Thank you. Now choose one of the following four options by pressing the buttons on your telephone. Press one if you would like to make a car reservation. Press two if you would like to talk to someone about a car reservation. Press three if you would. Please hold while we put you through to one of our assistants. Good morning, Melanie speaking. How can I help you? My name is Mr. Maxine, and I booked a car several days ago to be picked up from Heathrow Airport in London, and I'd like to change the booking. I see. Have you got a reference? Yes, I have it here somewhere on a piece of paper.、Uh, ah, here it is. It's A for Alpha, C for Charlie, F for Foxtrot, Y for Year. Yes. The number of fifteen, one、uh, five, A for Alpha, and G for Go. Let's see. Can I just check that? A C F Y fifteen A G. Yes. Mister John Maxine. Yes, that's it. Okay. So, how can I help you? I booked a car for three days from this Friday at six p.m. to Monday at six p.m. Yes, a manual. I'd like to change it for a larger car and an automatic rather than a manual, and I'd also like to book it for five rather than three days. Okay, let's have a look.、Mm, we have an estate which is automatic. Yes, that would be perfect. There is a difference in price, though. For the extra two days. Yes, but also for the size of the car. The estate is fifteen pounds more expensive per day than the saloon car you have already booked. Okay, and how much extra is it altogether then?、Um, that makes it an extra one hundred and sixty-five pounds. Hmm, it seems rather expensive.、Uh, the last time I hired one, it wasn't so much. When was that? Um, several weeks ago. I see. Speakers continue their conversation. Look at questions seven to ten. As you listen to the rest of the dialogue, complete the numbered spaces seven to ten. Write no more than two words or a number for each space. It's basically because the rates change daily, according to the cars available. The estate is the last automatic we have for hire for that period. We have a manual estate, which is cheaper. If that would help. No, it has to be an automatic. Okay, 
Shall I debit your card for the extra £165? Is it possible for me to pay the extra in cash when I pick up the car at the airport? I'm afraid that isn't possible, as there are no facilities for handling cash at that time of the day. <sighs> that seems odd. It's because the money can't be banked in the evening, and for security reasons, no cash is held on the premises. OK, you can debit my card. You'll have to give the number to me again. Isn't it logged on the screen? For security reasons, it doesn't come up on the screen when we look at the booking. Any changes, and it has to be entered again. I see. It's three double four five double nine double one. Three double four five double nine double one. Double four two five. Double four two five. Double seven five zero. Double seven five zero. Okay, that has now been authorized. Shall we send the receipt to your Park Vale address? Yes, uh, number forty. Is there anything else I can help you with, Mister Maxine? No, nothing else, thank you. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Goodbye. End of section one. Two. You are going to hear a radio program about sport. First. Look at questions eleven to fourteen. For these questions, listen carefully and circle the correct letters. Our mystery personality of the week, and your chance to win one of our fabulous prizes. Last week's competition generated a huge response, and the first five answers pulled out of the bag will receive a hundred pounds worth of sports clothes vouchers. And if you didn't win last week, here's another chance. And this week's prize is even bigger. We're giving away ten prizes of two hundred and fifty pounds worth of book, music, and clothes vouchers to mark the first anniversary of the show on the air. So get your pens ready to take down the address details. Just write the name of the person you think is our mystery personality and send it to Mystery Draw at the address Marcia will give you in just a second. The address will be repeated at the end of the show for those of you who didn't get it, and so it's over to Marcia, who will tell you a few tantalising details about our mystery person this week. Thanks, Mike. Well, here goes. Our mystery person this week is a very well-known footballer who plays for a famous club, and has also played for his national team. He is very talented and is enormously popular. Especially for the part he played in a famous footballing victory, and two clues: he hasn't got a famous wife, and he speaks French. If you think you know who it is, then pop the answer on a postcard and send it to Mystery Draw, PO Box fifty one ten, London SE one five LE. That's PO Box fifty one ten. And please don't forget to write your name and address too. And now it's back to Mike. Podcast continues. Look at questions fifteen to twenty. As you listen to the second part of the sports program, answer questions fifteen to twenty. For questions fifteen to nineteen, write no more than two words or a number for each answer. 
For question twenty, circle the correct letter. Yeah, get those postcards in and make this a bumper anniversary draw. Now, if you remember, last week on the show we talked to the organizer of a new group set up to help young people up to the age of twenty to get involved in activities like horse riding. Tennis, scuba diving, cycling, or any form of sport which involves some kind of expense. John Tebbit, the organizer, rang us to say that the response to his appeal on the show was staggering. A large number of people, both young and old, have offered their services free as volunteers. The whole thing has been overwhelming. John said that they had also had numerous offers of help throughout the country to use facilities free of charge. As if that was not enough, they've received many donations, including several rather large gifts of more than five thousand pounds. On behalf of John Tebbit and also of those who will benefit from the generous gifts to the trust, I would like to say thank you. This week we're going to talk to a very unusual athlete indeed. Patrick, who is twenty years of age, has been wheelchair bound for the past five years after a motorcycle accident left him paralysed from the waist down. This has not stopped this young man from getting out and about. He's an inspiration to all of us. Patrick has excelled in archery, beating the best in the field. So much so that he has won sponsorship from leading sports manufacturers, which has now enabled him to devote more time to perfecting his skills. So I would like to introduce you to Patrick, who is going to tell us what this sponsorship means to him. End of section two. You are going to listen to a conversation between two students talking about a lecture they have just attended. First, look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. There are four alternative answers: A, B, C, and D for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer, and circle the appropriate letter. Don't you think Dr. Adams' lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is a brilliant lecturer, but he puts them under a lot of pressure.、Mm. But don't you think that's good? Perhaps, but I am glad to have Dr. Adams as a lecturer. He is interesting and rather funny, and puts just the right amount of pressure on people. Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually, I did. In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting, and sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow. Your notes are so neat. There's not much Arabic. There is on this page. Oh yes, there is. Doctor Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he was talking about. Don't you keep careful notes?、Mm, sometimes. It depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the detail will fade. Conversation continues. Look at questions twenty-five to thirty.
As you listen to the next part of the conversation, write no more than four words for questions 25 to 27, and for questions 28 to 30, write no more than two words for each answer. Up everything afterwards so you can have a copy then and you can fill in anything I have missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detail person. I need to have everything written down before I can get the concepts clear in my head. And I am the complete opposite. I find all the detail clutters up my mind and I get very frustrated, which was just what he was on about. He mentioned a book he'd written. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual? Yes, called My Space. It's on the book list. So it is. I think I'll get that out of the library or, or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't really. Oh, yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent, but they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. Hmm, I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling? You know people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on? Do you know which way is north? It's, um, that way. You see? I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike and put me in a completely new place and I am totally lost. What about maps? I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. OK, we can do that. Which way is the library? It's... Uh, you're making fun of me. <laughs> now turn to section four. You are going to hear a lecture on fishing. First, Look at questions 31 to 36. As you can see, there are four alternative answers, A, B, C and D, for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Ladies and gentlemen, and in case you've forgotten, my name is Dr North from the Marine Habitat Research Unit at the University and I'm going to continue from the lecture that I gave a fortnight ago on humankind's relationship with the sea from a historical point of view and also on attitudes to different types of fishing. In today's talk, I would like to focus on the current problems in the fishing industry in Europe and, in particular, the present scarcity of marine fish. As with the last lecture, I've placed a book list, a few relevant articles and a copy of this lecture on the department website. A statistic to begin with. Since the 1970s, stocks of the most heavily fished species have fallen, on average, by 90%. And why has this happened? Well, there's a chain of events which begins with the demographic changes that have taken place in the world over the last century. During this time, 
The world population has grown at a phenomenal rate, with efficient and heavy fishing, which is technology-driven, meeting the increasing demands for food. As a consequence, many fishing stocks in the European waters, from the Atlantic to the North Sea and the Mediterranean, are now on the verge of collapse. But the problem is not restricted to European waters. It's a situation that's all too clear all around the world. Fish stocks in the Pacific Ocean, for example, are now on the verge of collapse due to a combination of overfishing and natural changes in ocean ecology. And there's another reason behind the increased demand for fish, and that is the changes in the eating patterns of different countries. Certain countries have a long tradition of fishing, for example, the southern European countries, but eating patterns have changed in countries like the United Kingdom, where fish was once considered as food for the poor rather than the rich. People have been turning to fish as a cheap and healthy alternative to meat, driving up demand and depleting stocks. Food scares like BSE and foot and mouth disease have also driven people away from eating meat, which again is invariably replaced by fish. For the speaker continues, look at questions 37 to 40. As you listen, complete the table. Write no more than three words for each answer. The reason is that a sizable proportion of the catch from modern trawlers or fishing boats is thrown away. Nets quite often land fish that are not wanted and which are thrown back into the sea dead. Discarded nets and other traps are responsible for the deaths of many fish. Our seas, like the rest of our environment, are littered with rubbish, which also destroys lots of fish. And fish are also being changed by the chemicals dumped into the oceans, as well as by overfishing, so the size of certain species is decreasing. More then have to be fished to produce a decent catch. And the solution? Well, there has to be more than one answer to the problem. Fish farms provide a partial solution, but the quality of the fish is usually inferior to those in the wild. Reducing the amount of fish that any one trawler or fishing boat is allowed to land is the most effective, but also the most unpopular measure. Countries in Europe like Spain rely heavily on fishing and are naturally against any step which restricts their catch. But if the depletion of fishing stocks continues, there will be no fish left to fish. Take the disappearance of cod from the Great Banks off Newfoundland, which was once the richest cod fishing area in the Atlantic. After a dramatic fall in the cod population for some unknown reason, a ban was imposed, which, it was hoped, would lead to a repopulation of the cod stocks. The cod did not return, and many fishermen were put out of work. This is a scenario which we do not want to be repeated on a large scale. Now, if you look at this table on the screen, you can see... of section 4. That is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet.